All right, thanks for joining us. I'm Holly Lester. I'm with the Department of Metropolitan Development, and uh, we're going to be going over some details about the Owner-Occupied Repair Program, which is part of our CDBG, uh, CDBG program, uh, the Community Development Block Grant Program. On the agenda, we're going to be covering program details. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of program comparison uh, and look at the different program outcomes for owner-occupied repair loans. So first of all, what is OOR? The Owner-Occupied Repair Program, also known as, or formerly known as homeowner repair, is available to low to moderate people who own and reside in their home. This program helps low to moderate income homeowners keep their homes up by providing 0% interest loans for repairs. Loans are provided through local nonprofit organizations that work directly with individual homeowners. Often these loans are paid off upon sale of the home. And what is CDBG? CDBG stands for Community Development Block Grant, which is one of the longest running programs of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, which you might already know as HUD. CDBG funds, um, CDBG funds local community development activities, such as affordable housing, anti-poverty, and economic development programs. CDBG is designed specific to benefit low to moderate income individuals and families. Here's our graph of who is eligible for OOR. Uh, you can see the different income limits uh, for one person, two person, three person households, etc. Um, a homeowner must reside in the home to qualify for, for these types of loans. Um, they must earn less than 80% of the area median income for Marion County. And you can see that uh, these income limits are effective as of last April in 2016. They're updated annually. And I believe that's updated in the summer. Isn't that right? OK. All right, the OOR funding comes from funds that start with uh, the US Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. So it uh, starts with federal funds. And then these funds are given to the city of Indianapolis, um, specifically to us here at the Department of Metropolitan Development. And then local area nonprofits apply to be part of the owner-occupied repair program. And when we award uh, different funding amounts to these specific nonprofits, uh, then those specific nonprofits will receive applications for CDBG home repair or um, OOR loans from individual homeowners. Local contractors will bid on the job. The nonprofit then awards the job to the lowest, most affordable, most responsive contractor. And the nonprofit manages the project until it's completed, and the nonprofit pays the contractor. So the individual homeowner never um, has to manage the funds themselves. The, um, the local nonprofits um, manage the project and they manage the funds. The program terms specifically are that this is a 30-year term, so it's a, a loan that is eligible to be forgiven after 30 years. There are no regular payments required, uh, so there are essentially no, uh, no costs for the homeowner to pay out of pocket. Um, either before the work begins or after the project is completed. Um, the uh, repayment of the loan will never be more than the cost of the original repair. And uh, payment is only due at uh, sale of the home or transfer of the property. So that means that this loan is typically repaid upon sale, refinance, or transfer of the home. So to explain this a little bit better, uh, we're going to use a hypothetical example of Mrs. Smith. She's a 65-year-old widow. She lives in a home that she and her late husband raised their family in, and the property mortgage is already paid off. Some of the roof shingles are missing, and there's a leak. Repair costs are estimated to be around $10,000. So she, since she is living on a fixed income, 
She's wary of dipping into her retirement savings to fix the roof. She has an annual income of $28,000, so she's eligible for her local neighborhood's nonprofit owner-occupied repair program. Now, here's some typical um, types of funding that, uh, that individual homeowners usually use. Uh, there's home equity loans, home equity lines of credit, and personal home repair loans. And we're going to uh, compare those to the CDBG loan just like uh, Mrs. Smith would to see um, how these uh, how these products dif differ from each other and what the advantages and disadvantages are. So the other three options are standard options from a bank or credit union. So for this first one, you can see that the CDBG loan has a fixed rate uh, interest a fixed interest rate of zero percent and there are no credit score requirements. So you don't have to worry about if you have a credit score that gives you a fair rating or a poor rating or an excellent or good. Everyone essentially uh, qualifies for it. There's no monthly payment. Uh, the loan is forgiven after 30 years um, and under certain other uh, conditions. And there are no underwriting requirements. And just as uh, a basis for comparison, I um, went online and got the, the best rates that I could find uh, for people with really high, excellent credit scores. Um, and even with that as a basis for comparison, you can see for the personal home repair loan that uh, that has a fixed rate of 7% interest, and that does have monthly payment. There is a credit score minimum and it's forgivable only via fi filing bankruptcy. And there are underwriting requirements if a homeowner chooses to um, pay for home repair costs by getting a personal home repair loan. Then there's a home equity loan, which has a fixed rate of 4.25% interest. And again, this is the kind of interest rate that's really only available to people who have really high credit scores. Again, you're going to have monthly payments. There's going to be a credit score minimum. Again, it's only forgivable via filing bankruptcy. And there's underwriting requirements. And uh, the last option is the home equity line of credit, sometimes also called a HELOC. Um, this has a variable uh, interest rate between 2.99% up to 5.1%. And again, these are rates that are only available to people with really high, excellent credit score ratings. Again, you're going to have the same issues of that you know, there are monthly payments expected and required, uh, credit score minimums, underwriting requirements, and it's only forgivable but, uh, via filing bankruptcy. And again, these are, um, these are just estimated rates only. Um, this is not considered a, a guarantee. Um, this is just for, for this is just for examples uh, purpose to have a basis for a comparison. Please check with your bank for more accurate percentages. So Mrs. Smith's repair costs were estimated to be approximately ten thousand dollars. So if we look at the first few years of a ten thousand dollar loan um, compared to the um, the products that we were looking at that are available through uh, standard bank or credit union. Um, you can see that for the CDBG loan, that payment amount is zero dollars for year one, two, three, five, year 10, and year 20, uh, and then it's forgiven after 30 years. Um, that personal loan, if we say it has a three-year term, then that's going to be, you know, uh, $3,700 that you're paying annually um, to get it paid off in three years. Uh, if you don't make those minimum payments, uh, you're going to be uh, paying it down after those first three years. And so it's going to be um, a total of uh, $11,000. Um, so that'll be $1,100 on top of the $10,000 uh, that, that were paid for the original repair costs. A home equity loan, 
Um, again, you're going to be paying for that for 10 years. It'll be $1,200 annually and $100 monthly payment. Um, and, and if you don't get it paid off uh, within the term of the loan, then you'll be paying any unpaid principal or interest. And that'll be a total of $12,000 um, with approximately $2,000 on top of the uh, original repair cost. And then our last comparison is the HELOC, the Home Equity Line of Credit. Uh, these often have 20-year terms, and they have um, different payment amounts for the draw period and the repayment period. And just for example's sake, we used an amount of uh, $510 uh, for an annual uh, payment amount. Um, but again, since these have variable interest rates, they can change at a moment's notice. Um, so planning for those, and depending how much uh, debt you're carrying on that line of credit, it's, it's kind of similar to, to the way that uh, credit cards work, um, that if you're carrying a lot of debt on that month to month, then that's going to um, increase uh, the amount of interest that you pay on it. Um, so that the total interest paid on a home equity line of credit could be approximately uh, $7,800 on top of the amount of the $10,000 cost to begin with. So you can see how in those nice green numbers for the CDBG loan that uh, no payment is required uh, or expected um, for 30 years. And we'll get a little more into the details of how the CDBG loan affects uh, sale of homes as well as inheritance scenarios. Here's a, just a quick FAQ, what the homeowner should expect if they accept the CDBG loan. When a homeowner accepts the CDBG loan, this means that a lien will be put on their property. A lien is a notice attached to your property that communicates that money is owed to a creditor. In the case of the CDBG loan, costs are due only if there are proceeds from the sale of the home or in certain cases of property transfer. In any case, the maximum amount of cost due will never be more than the original amount of the repairs or remodeling. Like most liens and mortgages, the CDBG loan lien is public record on file with the City of Indianapolis. And I'll also note that um, the paperwork for the CDBG loan uh, will have the word mortgage at, at the top of it. Um, we use the term CDBG loan in this presentation so that we could differentiate it from the property mortgage so that we wouldn't um, be talking about two different kinds of mortgages um, and have it be more confusing that way. So hopefully it is less confusing this way. <laughs> right, what happens, if, what happens to the loan if the homeowner decides to sell the home? We've got a flow chart here to show all right, we have the event of the sale. Next question we need to ask is, did the homeowner make any money on the sale of the home after the property mortgage repayment and closing costs have been taken care of? If that's a no, then there's no payback required on the loan. It's just forgiven. If there is any money left over after the property mortgage has been repaid and the closing costs have been repaid, then we're going to want to see if the proceeds, if the amount of the proceeds were greater than the amount of the original CDBG loan. So to use Mrs. Smith's example, that's $10,000. So let's say that the proceed amount was only $6,000. So if there's not a greater amount of proceeds than the CDBG loan, then the entire amount of the proceeds, that entire $6,000, goes to repay part of the CDBG loan, and then the difference is forgiven. So that $4,000 of difference just gets written off. It doesn't remain on the lien. There's not a record of, of, that, any, of that debt anywhere. Um, it won't follow the homeowner around. It's just forgiven. If there are greater uh, proceed amounts than the original uh, cost of the CDBG loan, then the entire amount of the CDBG loan is repaid. In our example, it's $10,000. Let's say that the homeowner um, gained 
uh, from the sale of their home, then the entire $10,000 of the CDBG loan would be repaid, and then the um, surplus or the um, amount, the $2,000 amount would be the homeowners to keep. In this example, uh, we're going to look at how this works out when proceeds from the sale are greater than the amount of the loan. Again, we're using our $10,000 example. The purchase agreement amount for the home was $100,000. Uh, there was uh, $80,000 left on the property mortgage, and then the closing costs were estimated to be $6,000. So we'll take that purchase price, uh, sale price of the home, $100,000, and take that $80,000 left on the property mortgage payoff and also take off the amount of the closing costs. So the proceeds amount is $14,000. So then you can see uh, on the uh, row number three, if pro the proceed amount is greater than the amount of the CDBG loan, then we'll subtract the CDBG loan amount from the amount of the proceeds. So that equity return is $4,000. That means that $10,000 of the CDBG loan has been paid off and satisfied. Um, and then that $4,000 is the homeowners to keep. And the $10,000 uh, from that CDBG loan that's been repaid is used to assist future owner-occupied repair projects. So that money just keeps getting recycled so that um, another person down the line might have you know another $10,000 roof repair, or they might have a hot water heater that needs replacement, or a furnace that needs replaced. In the second example, uh, we'll look at what happens when uh, proceeds from the sale are less than the amount of the loan. So uh, staying with the $10,000 amount for the CDBG loan, uh, the purchase agreement amount, uh, the sales price for this house is $90,000. The mortgage payoff amount is still $80,000, and then the closing costs are $5,400. So after the mortgage payoff amount and closing costs are taken away from the sale price, the original proceeds amount is $4,600, which is less than the $10,000 amount of the CDB, CDG, CDBG loan. Uh, then there's that $5,400 that is essentially a, a deficit, but it just gets forgiven. So the homeowner gets to make a partial payment um, towards that CDBG loan. Um, in this case, it means that they uh, essentially uh, broke even on, on their home, that they didn't gain any money from it, but they're not losing any money um, uh, from having a deficit of the CDBG loan. So the entire amount of revenue will be paid towards the CDBG loan and the $5,400 um, will be forgiven. And our last example here is if there's no proceeds from the sale. Um, in this example, we did a, uh, a loss scenario so that after the um, purchase agreement amount uh, was the same as the property mortgage payoff amount. Then there was that uh, deficit amount of $4,800. So since the homeowner lost money on the sale of the home, the CDBG loan will not be recovered. It just gets forgiven. Again, this doesn't go on a credit report. Um, it, it's just forgiven. It's written off. Um, and this would be true also if the uh, proceed amount was zero dollars. It doesn't have to absolutely be a negative loss. So if the proceed amount was zero dollars, then the CDBG loan would, would also be forgiven and again, would not go on their credit report. It wouldn't be a debt hanging over the homeowner's head. Our next question is, what happens to the loan if the homeowner passes away? So this is our inheritance flow chart. Uh, the first question that we need to figure out is if the inheritor wants to live in the home. If that's a no, then the CDBG loan is due and payable. Uh, and usually the inheritor um, sells the property and they're able to, um, the same way that the 
the flow chart for the sale of the property works out, um, they're usually able to pay off the CDBG loan via sale of the property. If the inheritor does want to live in the home, then the next question we need to figure out is if the inheritor is also low to mod income. If they are not, the CDGB loan is due and payable. Um, there's a number of different ways that um, different inheritors um, could try and uh, pay this off if, you know, if they happen to have the full amount of the CDBG loan that they could pay out of pocket, they can do that that way. Sometimes people shop around uh, for a mortgage to roll the, if there's like a remainder of the property mortgage, and then they can roll the cost of the CDBG loan in that, into that together. Um, they can pay it off that way. But this is something to keep in mind for, um, for folks, for homeowners that have um, adult children and um, they want their um, their children to inherit their home. They'll want to discuss this with their, their children so that their children can prepare for uh, for this responsibility. However, if the inheritor is also low to mod income, then they can verify their income with the Department of Metropolitan Development, and the CDBG loan can be transferred into their name. And the original inception of the CDGB loan uh, will be, it won't restart that 30-year uh, time clock. It will just be from the original inception of the loan, whenever the, whenever the parent uh, started the CDGB loan. At what point is the loan forgiven? Once 30 years have passed since the CD, CDG, CDBG loan originated, there's no payback after 30 years. It's forgiven. Uh, like we just went over, if an inheritor has the CDBG loan put in their name, the loan is forgiven 30 years from the original inception. However, there's not a, there's not a mechanism in place that after 30 years passes um, that things get set in motion for the loan to be forgiven on their own. The homeowner is required to contact uh, DMD and the lender to initiate the loan release. What happens if a homeowner chooses to repay the loan early? We have a very simple flow chart <laughs> for that too, or for early repayment. Early repayment is optional, and we have the address here um, that checks should be made out to the city of Indianapolis and sent to us here at the city county building. There are pros and cons to early loan repayment. Um, if you want to pay off the loan early, um, the pro to that is that the homeowner may be eligible for additional home equity lines of credit and that um, when the time comes for resale or inheritance, there'll be a more straightforward process for that. Uh, the con to paying off the loan early is that the homeowner is paying out of pocket, um, even though that amount will never be more than the original cost of the repairs. And then there's also uh, pros and cons to not paying off the loan. And most of these are essentially just the inverse of what we just went over. Um, the pro is that the homeowner is not paying out of pocket. Um, but the other, the extra pro that happens in this scenario is that if the homeowner waits 30 years, the balance is forgiven. So even if they never made one payment, um, the, the entire amount will still be forgiven after 30 years. Uh, the con is that um, resale and inheritance um, will be a slightly more complex process. Um, like we were talking about how uh, homeowners who are planning on having their children inherit their property will want to have conversations with their children about exactly how this process works. Um, the other con is that the homeowner may be less eligible for home equity lines of credit. However, uh, this is a product that does subordinate to other um, to, Every, everyone that I've seen come through, um, we've always subordinated to any other kinds of um, mortgages, mortgages and uh, the refinancing was so I do. 
Okay. All right, so here's the general outcomes that happen as a result. Uh, the first one is that the loan is repaid through the sale of the home. This is um, one of the two most common um, outcomes. Um, again, this only happens if proceeds from the sale exist. Uh, the second option is that uh, the loan is transferred to uh, an inheritor's name. Um, if it's a low income or low to mod income inheritor, they must live in the home, um, but they can transfer the CDBG loan to their name. A higher income inheritor living in the home, even if they are living in the home, they will have to repay the loan. Uh, the third option is the homeowner can choose to repay the loan early. And the last option is that the loan can be forgiven. And this happens uh, with two, two scenarios. One being the 30 years passes since the CDBG loan was originated, or if the home is sold without profit. So let's get back to Mrs. Smith. The way that the process actually works, um, let's say she has looked at all of her options and she's decided that the CDBG loan is the best option for her. So she's going to submit an owner-occupied repair application to her local nonprofit my example, neighborhood development. <laughs> Mrs. Smith works through the OOR coordinator with MEND to schedule visits from contractors. MEND determines the lowest and most responsive contractor for the job. The OOR coordinator works with Mrs. Smith to schedule the roof installation. Um, Mrs. Smith hasn't paid anything out of pocket um, at the beginning of this process and even upon completion of the roof, Mrs. Smith has no, she still has no out-of-pocket expenses. A question that we get sometimes is, well, why is this a loan instead of a grant? Um, when, the way that we have it set up so that when the homeowner or borrower sells the home, um, that's how these loans are most commonly repaid. This money gets reinvested back into the CDBG loan program so that another homeowner can make needed repairs or so another uh, low to mod income homeowner can make needed repairs. So it's nice that that money gets recycled. And then we have a few resources here for uh, the Indianapolis nonprofit who, uh, who are part of this program. Uh, these five here, the Indy Habitat for Humanity does it um, pretty much everywhere in Indianapolis. Um, and Indianapolis Neighborhood Housing Partnership does it pretty much uh, everywhere in, in Indianapolis, but Mabel Fall Creek, SEND, and um, Westside Community Development Corporation have specific neighborhoods that they focus on. And another few things to keep in mind is uh, with the local nonprofit owner-occupied repair providers, these organizations uh, will usually have many individuals contacting them for this program for repairs. This can result in a waiting list, which can be as long as a year or more. So please be patient and work with the dedicated employees involved in this program. And here is my contact information again. I'm Holly Lester. I'm the CDBG coordinator with the City of Indianapolis. And that's my phone number and email address.